Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. And today we are talking about a very important topic and we have a very special guest with us, Ritu Java. I'm sure you guys have heard of her. She is the CEO of PPC Ninja, a leading software and tools and service provider um, to brands specializing in ads and sponsored ads and all kinds of PPC stuff. She started her journey as an Etsy seller and now serves the Amazon community with uh, PPC Ninja. And she is just a wealth of tactics and tricks and tools and suggestions to help you set up and grow your PPC ads. So without further ado, please welcome Ritu to the show. Ritu, thank you so much for joining me here at the Amazon Files. I am beyond honored. Thank you so much, Kirsten, for inviting me to this one. It's amazing. Of course, of course, you know, we, we can, we always, of course, at the Amazon files are talking all about Amazon and different things. And I know your level of expertise is, is, um, you know, PPC and paid advertising, but we all started somewhere. And I'd love to, for you to start uh, to tell us a little bit about how you got into e-commerce, whether it was, I think, 20 years ago or 10 minutes ago, how did, how did you get into e-commerce? Yeah, I love that question. Yes. I mean, my starting point, you know, goes back to 2010 when I had, um, taken kind of like a break from being a, a new mom and uh, was just trying to, you know, figure out what to do with my life. And I was just getting myself um, interested in all kinds of different things. And this was the time when I thought, okay, um, I can maybe do some creative stuff because I'm, I like to be creative. I like, I like to use my hands to, to make, make stuff. And so I started making jewelry, right? So that was my starting point. Uh, I mean, up until then, I was mostly in an IT uh, role. So I was um, in a tech company for the longest time. Um, and I had been a business development manager for a Japanese company. I used to live in Japan at the time. Um, and then I was like, okay, let me start this thing on the side because I have a little bit of time on my hands. So I started you know, sell, uh, creating jewelry. And then I um, started selling my jewelry and it started selling, you know, I was like quite excited with the, the possibility that, okay, now I could maybe take this online. And that, that's when I started my first kind of e-commerce store on Etsy. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was my uh, original point. And then of course, uh, it's not easy as everyone knows, <laughs> you know, when you start a business, it doesn't mean that just because you created a listing that people are going to flock to you and start buying your products. No, that's far from the truth. So you've got to do so much work. And that's what I had to kind of learn and teach myself, you know, I had to teach myself advertising and like basics of marketing and how to promote yourself and you know what kind of where to, you know what channels to use and where to show up and oh, Etsy collections and all, all that good stuff um, yeah so th that that's when I started and now I'm uh, you know fast forward to today I'm the CEO of PPC Ninja and we're uh, you know a data based company that helps uh, you know hundreds of uh, Amazon sellers uh, you know get the best out of their advertising uh, dollars. So, so you learned how to advertise based on trying to sell your jewelry on eBay, or I mean, sorry, yes. Etsy. Etsy, and you thought, yeah. wow, well, I, I list this stuff, but how come everybody isn't coming to buy it? And so you exactly. realized that um, advertising was a way to bring in some more customers for you. And when you first started out with, with the Etsy uh, advertising, how was that working for you? So at the time, this is 2010, there wasn't any Etsy advertising. It was like fairly new. The only way we could kind of promote ourselves was through external uh, ads, like you know, running Facebook ads or Google ads and stuff like that. So Facebook ads was the thing that I went to and I started creating um, you know, all kinds of audiences and a lot of them were just fake audiences. And I'd be like, my goodness, why are these people clicking on my ad? I'd be like so mad at them. But, you know, anyway, it was all a good learning exercise uh, trying to figure out how, you know, what's the right target audience like who who to go after what the interests are so so um so that was my uh, advertising uh, you know kind of traffic uh, channel but then i also had to build some organic uh, traffic channels so i created my own uh, youtube channel just to show people how i make my jewelry so that was like a additional interesting thing you know that people probably want to know maybe so I, I started doing that and then I created a blog and I started blogging about my jewelry taking you know photos of the steps and things like that you know um, I was also dabbling
dabbling in just general artwork at that time. So I, I was also painting and doing a few other things. So I created another blog, which was just, um, you know, yeah, basically talking about creative stuff and painting and stuff like that. But then I was cross-linking those blogs because maybe the audiences are common and I would show one blog's uh, feed on another blog. So I learned all those tricks, you know, what are the right widgets to add to Blogspot and things like that. Blogspot, my goodness, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we're, we're going way back at this point talking about these things. That's great. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I figured out, you know, there's, there's so much, so much work. There's just too much work to send traffic to your pages. And then on Etsy, uh, there was this concept of collections where, you know, you could... Um, partner up with uh, other uh, creators and create collections that maybe followed the same color theme. So it's like a, it's almost like a mood board or a visual palette mm -hmm. where you have multiple uh, products from different, you know, uh, different areas and they're just color coordinated. So there's, mm -hmm. there's a yellow theme or a blue theme or whatever. So there could be a, a blue dress with a, a blue pair of earrings going with a blue shawl and things like mm -hmm. that. So I was creating those collections with other people and trying to promote my 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 listings yeah that that was exciting <laughs> yeah you know it's funny as that I love um as you got into that you even your body language and your face change and you're talking about all the creative things I can uh -huh. tell that really really um inspires you you know as far yes. as a creative outlet you know what's funny is that we did not know that we had something in common um mm -hmm. actually I buy sell and trade um costume jewelry a, co a costume jewelry vintage costume jewelry and i make art projects from them so i will make oh art from goodness. old uh, vintage pieces yeah. um everything from i just actually finished one called time piece where it's this big piece sign and i use broken watches and watch parts to kind of yeah. put the pieces together so um yeah. it's, just, it's uh, a creative outlet yeah. for me as well and jewelry is just so it. pretty and so you know a lot of it is just gorgeous and well made and you know you can do right things. so yeah i'm glad that we shared that in yeah. common I know I, I used to I, I used to do that as well like I used to do scrapbooking with you know steampunk and other kind of like pieces from I, I used to go to flea markets and buy like broken watches and you know get their parts and put them on like uh, journals and stuff oh my goodness that's so cool that we have that I'll, in common <laughs> I'll have to send you the the time piece that I made it's very steampunkish it looks it. very similar to that so I'll, I'll I'll send you a picture of it awesome. so, that's fun so um talking about all of these different things and getting into business and and you mentioned being a, you know, a new mom back in, in 2010 or so. So how many children do you have and how how is that weaved into your business building? I have just one boy and he is almost 19 now. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's in uh, he's in college and he takes care of himself. But, you know, having him, you know, be my kind of, uh, you know, together partner in all these things like I used to be um, all, all, you know sitting uh, down on my like, little table and with all these jewelry pieces and stuff laid out and he would be like mom I want to make jewelry too and I was like sure like he would get his own and then every time I would go shopping he'd be like I want to buy beads too and I would be like oh my goodness this is you know like each piece costs like a dollar or something and and he wants like everything and he wants to make it I was like fine you know do it like you know you join me and so he would be playing while I was making the jewelry he would be making pieces and then he would make pieces for me and oh. he gave it to me on like Christmas and stuff and I was like oh my goodness that's a you know that's a treasure so it was fun uh having him just watch me try to create something and believe it or not it has you know spurred that entrepreneurial spirit in him and he's actually already kind of doing stuff that I couldn't have ever imagined doing at his age, you know, selling stuff on eBay and whatnot. And I say, wow, this is this is great to have that early education, you know, with uh, with a parent, you know, who's who's doing this stuff, and your your kids are just getting inspired just by being around you, which is pretty cool. Like it's like an MBA, yes, <laughs> almost. <laughs> It's so, it, and I love that you said that because it really is true. Our children are learning and seeing that not, their moms are not only, um, you know, bringing in some extra income, but they're seeing us chase our dreams or see, seeing us um, be creative and figure out what's working and what not, what's not working. And it's still taking care of them and providing, um, you know, love and nurturing to them, but also showing them that this is what it looks like, that I'm not just your mom. I'm also a very creative person. And I'm very, um, and I'm ambitious and I like all these different things and we don't all have to just love one thing at a time and, and having that be uh, a 
good example for them to see that anything is possible with what you want to do and, and in living that out and showing them. I love your your example of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, so let's talk let your shift into Amazon. So you've done the creative side and made some jewelry and made your way on, on Etsy and learned some advertising. How did that tram transition into um, being something you're doing for Amazon sellers? Yeah, so um, so then uh, this was way back uh, when I was in Japan. Uh, that was like, gosh, years and years ago now. Uh, so I decided that, you know, this isn't working. Like this e-commerce online thing isn't working. I need to go back to school. So I actually moved from Japan to the US and did a, a course, a, a year long course in data science. So that's how I kind of got in, you know, back into the, went back to college, but then also, uh, started, you know, studying the space, you know, more closely, like how does one do advertising the right way? You know, what's the way to get people to, to buy stuff? So I, the intention was, of course, the motivation was, of course, to grow my own business and learn something new. Um, but the, the side benefit of that was that I, you know, uh, kind of stumbled upon Amazon. Like I didn't realize that this was a thing back then. I didn't realize that there were Amazon sellers and that they were, you know, kind of doing similar stuff to what I was doing, but at a different scale, this was like way bigger and they were getting everything white labeled and private labeled. And I was like, what is private label? <laughs> like This is like 2015. I was literally Googling what is private label in the context, right? Of what I was seeing on Amazon. And then I discovered all this, uh, you know, the Alibaba's and the sourcing and all that stuff. Um, anyway, so I got a, a chance to work uh, for an e-commerce seller, and that's how I got introduced to Amazon, and then, um, you know, worked uh, in the capacity of a marketing manager for a software tool that was uh, built for uh, serving Amazon sellers, and then fast forward, you know, uh, we kind of extracted just the, the most important tool out of that set, um, and it was the uh, advertising piece. So we created this new company and a new uh, software called PPC Ninja, and this helps Amazon sellers optimize their PPC and give them the right bid recommendations and helps them with budgets and placements and bidding strategies and things like that. So uh, that was uh, the evolution of my kind of journey into Amazon. And then um, I also started a services business serving uh, any Amazon sellers who were interested in us managing their account for them. So that became like another kind of um, really good, uh, you know, side kind of thing, which has now grown to quite a quite a large uh, team and then we also have a lot a lot of clients that we manage their ppc for so we have both we have software and we have services so that's my story awesome i love that and so how is this a good fit for you at the time of your life you are now i know you you talked a little bit about your earlier journey and and, and the the creative side and doing some things like etsy and then going back to school and now and you know kind of starting and running your own business so what is really brings the most fulfillment for you in this position that you're in now yeah so you know i am an engineer by background so i went to engineering school uh and then i also am a creative person so i cannot decide whether i'm left brain or right brain i am not sure <laughs> you know i have probably a bit of both but both these things really excite me i love data i love analyzing data and and i love let's say looking at an account that someone um you know a ppc account and then um going really deep into that and trying to figure out okay what is it that's missing here what is it that i can you know, change and transform and help uh, help the seller with. We do all our PPC audits for free. Um, and, uh, you know, we find an immense kind of fulfillment in, in doing that because then we can kind of, um, you know, guide uh, sellers uh, with uh, strategies that they could use. And of course, a, a lot of them eventually, you know, come back to us and say, hey, can you manage uh, your account? That's kind of the goal that eventually we can be the ones to manage. But even without that, we're happy to share our uh, analysis and assessment of PPC um, performance and, um, you know, show them maybe they maybe they can use our software, maybe they can use just our uh, our, our services or something in between. So mm -hmm. it's it's fulfill fulfilling uh, for me um, at this stage in life because uh honestly i don't have the the uh, you know the eyesight to kind of do jewelry anymore so that was like in the past like i cannot have a magnifying glass anymore and be deaf with my hands um i'm actually this is better suited to who i am now um 
And I'm also a little paranoid about collecting too much inventory in the house, like with like lots and lots of beads and lots and lots of parts and stuff like that. Uh, so it's I, I think it's kind of working out really well. It, it fulfills me. It's what makes me wake up in the morning and turn on the computer and say, OK, well, what can I do today? <laughs> Yeah, I love that. And and just mentioning the transitions that we all go through, you know, as moms and as, as business people, you know, just figuring out, like, I love how you said your, your right brain and left brain, a little bit of both, you know, I think that, that that's, um, you know, really a great place to admit that to know that, yes, you have an amazing creative side. And you also have this, this hunger for data and getting it correct and analyzing it, because we can always make really good decisions based on really good data, right? You know, once you have the data, you can figure out what your next move is good or bad it is what it is and you can you know go from there and just talking about the different stages and I love the phrase that you use you said who I am now and I love that you said that because so many we go through so many different phases and changes in life and so many people um, pull back from that and they think it's awful and they don't like change to where uh, the way you said that so beautifully is just like well it, it just uh, it fits me for who I am right now and where you're fulfilled now now. And that changes over time. And I love yes. to acknowledge that and realize that, um, mm -hmm. you know, back in 2010, when you first started even at Etsy, you're a different person. Now you've learned so many things, you've gone through different things, you've, you've gone through different stages of motherhood and in business. And uh, I love to, you know, this is just permission for everyone who hasn't maybe given themselves permission to be who you are today. And that doesn't have to match. I hope I hope I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. Right. Um, I hope I've grown and changed and evolved into, um, you know, just being the age I'm at, right? I, I haven't been this yes. age before. I haven't been at this stage of, of motherhood or even business before. So um, embracing that we make changes at different times and some things still suit us and might suit us forever. And sometimes it's okay to just make changes. I think gone are the days of maybe our parents who um, went to college or went to school, they got a job, they stayed there for 30 or 40 years, they retired and, and moved on. Mm -hmm. And now in the age that we're in with the digital, uh, um, people being digital nomads and people just being globally connected. Um, we have so many more opportunities to change up what we're doing if we decide a decade later that like, oh, that was great for that time, but now I'm moving on and-, and Totally. So absolutely, love it, love it. And so your journey has just seemed to take a lot of those little twists and turns, but um, you describe it so so happily that I love that that that's just part of who we are. You know, it's not always begrudging. It's sometimes it's just letting something else go so we can embrace um, what's new for us and using all the different experiences you have to kind of come together. Um, so let's talk quickly uh, before we wrap up here about some of the top tactics right now, um, quick action steps that, that people can take in, in their advertising. So what is, what's really helping people stand out in today's market when it comes to PPC advertising? You know, there's so much uh, in the world of PPC and it's evolving uh, at the speed of light almost. Like every day we're learning something new. Amazon is giving us new data. And there's just a lot, a lot more than we had in the past. Uh, and because I'm speaking from a data science perspective, I just think that uh, the one thing that I would uh, encourage everyone to do is to start taking advantage of the data that Amazon is already giving us. One such report is the search query performance report. It tells you exactly what where you stand with all the keywords uh, you know your brand is associated with or your ASINs are associated with. So if there was just one little step you you could take today, I would say definitely go and check the search query performance report out. It's under brand analytics. That's where it lives. And this report will actually tell you your top 1,000 uh, search terms or keywords. And you can compare that with the keywords that you're currently advertising and try to look for any gaps because you you might be uh, relevant for, let's say, a, a bunch of keywords that you're not even bidding on, right? So you can actually go and strengthen that, you know, relevancy by um, kind of accelerating it through ads. See, ads, uh, the, 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 the job of ads is to accelerate what Amazon would have learned anyway, but it would have taken a long time, right? Mm -hmm. So through ads, through picking the right keywords and bidding on them, you're showing up for them, which means you improve your chances or probability of someone clicking on your ad with that keyword and then buying it and thereby giving Amazon the message that this keyword is relevant for this product. So through ads, you enhance and kind of shorten that, that life cycle. 
And so it's really important to know uh, if there's any keywords that Amazon thinks you're relevant for, pick them up and start ads uh, for them. Yeah, that is a great quick tip. And anybody, no matter the size of your business, whether you started yesterday or a decade ago, that is an actionable step you can do right now. So I would suggest everybody take a few minutes, do that, look at those reports, look at the keywords, the gaps that you might be filling. If you've never advertised before, it's a great place to start. Maybe pick the top five and start looking at your budget and, and figuring out what you want to put towards what. So if someone had a very limited budget when it comes to their PPC, which uh, let we all are on a budget, right? But if we have a very limited budget, what do you say is the most important thing that they need to spend on when it comes to ads? Yeah, so first of all, I would check the conversion rate of your ASIN. So let's say you have 10 ASINs or let's make it smaller. Let's make it five ASINs. If you have five ASINs, what you want to do is go to your business report and by child ASIN and look at the unit session percentage. You will find some of your ASINs being higher with the unit session, session percentage as compared to others. And so if you see enough uh, conversions happening, which means you have enough sales and it's substantial data, you can count on that unit session percentage uh, to, be, to be representative of your conversion rate. So what does that do? Let's take an example. What if your conversion rate is 10% uh, for one of your ASINs? Okay, that's great. So 10% means that if you send uh, 100 people to your uh, product detail page, then 10 of those people will buy your products. Just explaining it very simply. So 10, 10% conversion rate means 100 people sent, 10 people bought. Now on average, 100 people sent, if you send them through ads, it means 100 clicks, right? 100, at least 100 clicks would have uh, led you to 10 sales. And on average, a click is, let's say, a dollar each. So that means you're spending $100 to get 10 sales, uh, right? So if you if you can work out the math on that and you can see which of the um, which of your products is actually better suited for advertising, I would say pick uh, pick that one. Start from there. The higher, the better. The average conversion rate on Amazon is 10%. Uh, and if you if your unit session percentage is above that, I would say that's a good candidate to start with advertising so that you can uh, spend less to get more. Right. So if, if let's say your conversion rate is 20 percent, it's a better conversion rate. That means if you send 100 clicks or 100 uh, people to your page, then 20 people would buy, which means it's a lot cheaper, right? You, you're spending uh, less to get more. Uh, so start there. And then uh, in terms of what kind of ads to set up, I would say there's uh, a few different basic ads that you can try. So first of all, you can try the auto campaign, which is a simple, very simple. You don't really need that much uh, to, to, to get it set up. The only tip I would say is that split up your auto campaigns into four uh, different ads, uh, and each of these should target one of the four auto targeting groups. Within auto campaigns, there's four targeting groups close match, loose match, substitutes, and complements. I would recommend splitting those out, leaving only one of them active while you disable the other three uh, in each of them. That way, you'll get four, uh, four out of the same campaign type. Keep your bids low to start with because obviously you don't know whether it's going to perform or not. Everything starts out as an experiment till it proves itself out, right? So start low, inch up. That would be my recommendation if you have a limited budget. If you do it the other way around, what's gonna happen is that you'll spend a lot of money before you gain enough uh, data to make any decisions. Because let's say you start bidding $2, $3 a click. Well, that money will get spent in no time, like three clicks and your $10 are gone, right? Whereas if you start, let's say, at 10 or 15, 20 cents yeah, to begin with, um, two or three clicks will only cost you 60 cents. That's the difference, right? $10 versus 60 cents. So it's just the, the style of advertising would be a little bit slower, but at least you can uh, be sure not to kind of blow through your budget and learn nothing out of it, right? Um, so yeah, those, those would be my, my uh, kind of tips to start auto campaigns and then learning from the auto campaigns, you can start creating manual campaigns as well uh, with exact matches, uh, that way you can kind of uh, see whatever is working. You can start strengthening that uh, using um, product, uh, sorry, using uh, sponsored product uh, ads, manual sponsored product uh, ads. 
Awesome. That is so helpful. I really appreciate you running through that with us just so that we know. I have one final question I have about that because I love what you said about you mentioned starting the, with the advertising with the things with the highest conversion rates, which I find that most of my students, um, they panic and something's not selling at all. And so then they want to go in and they want to put PPC uh, ads on something that's not selling or doesn't have any ads yet. And so what are, what are your suggestions? suggestions for that because I think that seems like a move of de desperation rather than trying to get something that's already doing well to do better. Um, I have clients that come and say, how much should I spend on the PPC? I haven't sold a single one of this item yet and they're worried about not making any sales. Um, what are your thoughts about that? So Amazon has a cold start problem because when you launch a new product, it doesn't have reviews yet, right? So it doesn't really uh, speak for itself. So when someone sees the page, they're like, oh, this doesn't have reviews, they move on. So you you wasted your, your PPC on, on that, right? So it's like you're, you're starting cold uh, because obviously you don't have reviews, you don't have momentum. So chicken and egg for a bit, mm -hmm. uh, totally understand that. Uh, now, if, if you're at the stage where nothing is moving even, you need to do something to kind of trigger it. Like either you send external traffic to your page or you know, run PPC even at a loss, but you can kind of decide. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna push it through PPC, um, even though it's it's not yet kind of it hasn't taken off. I'm gonna use this as the the thing that starts the flywheel because you need the flywheel to be working in the first place. But then, how do you get the flywheel started? You need some external triggers, either external traffic or let's say you have an email list somewhere. You're sending people to your page with discounts. Definitely use coupons at that start because coupons give you an extra kind of badge, which shows up more, very prominently in the search results. And people generally eyeball that and say, okay, this has a coupon, this one doesn't. Okay, let's try the one that has a coupon, no matter what the amount. Even if it's a dollar off, doesn't matter. As long as you have the orange badge, it's fine. Um, so I would do that to kind of uh, kind of start the fire because if it's like cold, it's you've got to start the fire. Uh, but let's say you've been advertising uh, or sorry, you have been selling for a bit and now you want to start advertising there. I would start with what's already working and give it a boost so that that buys you uh, some some uh, leverage to kind of then support the less successful products. And then you can, can kind of get all of them on board. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing those really quick tips. And I do want to remind everyone that uh, Ritu has graciously offered to teach a little bit more of an in-depth training into our Amazon Files Hub. Of course, that's our membership site for those who are Wholesale Bundle students and advanced students in our Amazon Files Hub. If you haven't checked that out yet, go to mommyincome.com forward slash hub and see if you qualify to be a student. You don't want to miss Ritu's training. She is going to do all of that and then some, just showing us some quick and dirty tips to be able to get started because I know in this economy, we all have dead inventory. We'd like to see it move a little bit faster. We all have new ideas we're bringing to the table, new wholesale bundles you guys are launching. And you know how I feel about PPC, only when your listing is optimized, only when you're ready to start that fire or keep that fire moving. But my favorite tip of today was really looking at stuff that's selling. Look at your best sellers and look at how you can improve selling even through your best sellers by adding just a few uh, PPC ads to those with a few specific relevant keywords, improve your relevancy. So I love that. Thank you so much for being vulnerable and talking to us about your motherhood and also your PPC <laughs> yeah. stuff. So can you remind Absolutely. everyone where they can come and, and get in touch with you and find you to reach out? Yeah, sure. So my uh, email is v2 at ppcninja.com. It's uh, simple. Uh, and if you happen to be on LinkedIn, well, I'm active there. My full name is my handle. So R-I-T-U. J-A-V-A, -A, Java, as in coffee, as in the island. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can find me uh, in either uh, one of those two places. Well, thank you so much for being here. Again, you guys, ppcninja.com. Also, don't forget, we're going to be doing a training coming up soon with Ritu. So you're going to learn all about um, the some of the quick and easy tips to start your PPC uh, running and going smoothly. Again, you guys, thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, and I don't take that for granted. I appreciate your time and your effort and your energy. We'll see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.